So what, why, you know, because we teach this to kids uh, when they're very, very young, why is it hard for, for leaders to be honest? What, what, what have you found in your work? You know, what it was interesting, Vince, I, I don't find most of the deceit out there to be in the service of self-interest. There's certainly those psychopaths out there that are on the take and they get our headlines every day. I didn't want to tell the Toronto stories or the Volkswagen stories or, you know, the, the, the Wells Fargo stories. I wanted to tell the, the good stories. But the vast majority of deceit and deception out there is in the service of self-protection. Some, some image we want to concoct of ourselves, some response we want to engineer, some uh, reaction we want to avoid, some pain we're trying to uh, engage. Uh, you know, I ask leaders to do this you know, work all the time. If you want to become more honest, you have to become more honest about your dishonesty first. Mm -hmm. University of Massachusetts research says that we all lie on average twice a day. Uh, and if there's even remote truth in that, I ask leaders to simply go back over the last 10 days of your life, look at your calendar, you know, recall where you've been. And if I were to ask you to document all of your moments of dishonesty, all the places where you behave beneath your values, the data you embellished to your boss, the feedback you withheld from your teammate or your direct report, the, the Starbucks barista you were curt with, the family member you ignored, um, the places where you were not, your, your say-do gap was, a, was distinct. You would find an absolute pattern among those behaviors and those experiences. You would, you would see that there are certain conditions that bring you to your dishonesty, that bring you to your lesser self. And there's a need you're meeting. There's a narrative that you've told yourself that this behavior um, will meet this need, even though it's not true. And unless you're true about those narratives, you can't rescript them into more honest ones. Yeah. Um, all of us have those patterns. All of us have those conditions that invite a, the, the darker side of us out. Mm -hmm. And you have to face into that mirror if you want to become more honest. Yeah, so that you know the level of of self awareness and self in, insight that we need is is really extraordinary. You know, and, and I think particularly because uh, you know that self protection is also I think about the complexity of leadership today and the pressures and the demands that many leaders are, uh, face. It's not an easy role, and so we can find ourselves you know slipping into some of these traps. But you know, you, you provide kind of the way forward for us to to be a little bit more enlightened and, and self aware. Now well, there, I, there are, I think most leaders don't appreciate the complexity that you mentioned. I don't, I think yeah. they think, especially when you go from the middle to the top, I think organizations want people to believe that this is just a bigger version of what you've always mm -hmm. been doing. And the whole idea of living your life in a fishbowl or on, on the jumbotron in public, the whole idea of having everything you say and do scrutinized, um, uh, everything being your fault, um, people trying to read your mind and, and, and attribute motives to you that aren't there. Um, it's an assault and leadership can be a very unforgiving role. And most people are just not prepared for that. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, the opportunity we have is to help people, you know, understand that that's in, in our language, in the work I do, that's what you're signing up for. That's part of the contract. And you need to know that before going in, if you hope to be, to be effective. 